and learning the basics of uh, the almighty Blender game engine. Now it may seem a bit complicated at first, but we'll be using simple tools and uh, simple logic to build our uh, our little toy here. And if you follow along, I think you'll be you'll be pretty fine. So let's begin. I have the default Blender scene here. And first thing I'm going to do is change the frame rate here from 30 frames per second to 60. I'll also move right here from the render options and click Blender Render and change it to Blender Game. Now we have the default cube here selected. I'll hit the X key and select Delete. I'll hit Shift A and add mess a circle. I'll move over here at the circle options and change the amount of vertices from 32 to 24. OK. I'll hit the R key to rotate and X to rotate on the X axis and rotate my circle for 90 degrees on the X axis. Now I'll hit 1 on my numeric keypad and 5 to switch to front author view. And I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode. Now I'll hit the E key to extrude, and you can see the extruded vertices here, and I'll click the right mouse button to cancel any movement for my extruded vertices, and I'll hit the S key to scale them down. At about here. Now I'll hit the tab key again to switch from edit to object mode, and I want to add a material to my circle here, so I'm switching over to the materials panel, click this little icon and click new for a new material. Let's change the name of the material. I'm clicking the material name field here and I'm going to change this to core underscore one. So for this material I'll bring the diffuse intensity up to one and bring the specular intensity down to zero and I think we're pretty good. And I'm, go I'm going to add another circle. Hit Shift A, add mess a circle. Now the second circle here will use not 24 but 64 vertices. Okay. I hit R and X and type in 90 to rotate my circle for 90 degrees on the X axis. And now I hit the S key to scale the second circle up. At about here. Now again I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and hit the E key to extrude. You can see the extruded vertices here. Right mouse button click to cancel any movement and I'll hit the S key to scale my vertices down. Now I'll hit the A key to deselect all and B key for the selection tool here and I'm going to click and drag all the way down and to the side and select those vertices right here. Now let's select a few vertices more. I'll move over here at the select menu, click select and select more. And by clicking this I'm selecting more connected vertices here and you can also select more by clicking by hitting uh, Control and numpad plus. Now we have those vertices here selected. I'll hit the X key and select delete vertices. Okay. Now I'll hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode and I'm going to add a new material to this second circle also. Change the name to core underscore two. I'll also bring this the diffuse intensity up to one and the specular intensity down to zero. And I'll change the diffuse color to a bright orange color at about here. Now that we have the outer circle here selected, I'm going to hold down the shift key and right mouse button click the white circle here to select it. And I'll hit Ctrl J to join my objects. Now if I hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode, you can see that these two circles are now part of the same object. And you can also see that we have both the materials on this single object. Okay. Now while I'm in edit mode and uh, if I add a mesh now it will be a part of the existing mesh 
I'll hit Shift A and add mesh another circle. Now the circle will use six vertices. Okay. And I'll hit the S key to scale those vertices up. At about here. And I'll hit the E key to extrude. You can see the extruded vertices. Right mouse button click to cancel any movement for my extruded vertices. And I'll just hit the S key to scale them down. Okay. Now I'll hit the A key to deselect all and A again to select all. And I'll hit Ctrl N to recalculate the normals of my object here to point outside. Now as I can see this object right here is pretty big for my scene. So I'll hit the S key to scale it down. Okay. I'll now hit 1 on my mirror keypad to switch the front off of you. Zoom in a bit. And I'm going to hit R and Y to rotate the vertices. And as you can see I'm operating in edit mode and you'll see why in a while. So I'll hit R and rotate my vertices here for 90 degrees on the Y axis. Now I'll hit Z and X to move the vertices on the X axis. And let's move them at about here. Okay. Now I'll hit Shift A and as I told you before, I'm moving those vertices here in edit mode because I want the center of my object. You can see this little dot here. I want it to stay at the center of the world. Now I'll hit Shift A and add mesh plane. Let's take a better look at our plane. I'll hit R, X and type in 90 to rotate my plane here for 90 degrees on the X axis. Now I'll hit S and Z to scale it on the Z axis. Let's scale it down. OK. And I'll hit Z and X to grab and move it on the X axis. And what I want here is to have the edge of the plane here where the orange point is. Now I'll hit S and Z to further scale it on the Z axis. Let's scale it down a bit more. And I think we're good at about here. Now let's take a better look. I'm going to select those two vertices here. One, two. Hold down the shift key to select them both and I'll hit 1 on my numeric keypad for the front author view and hit Z and X to grab them and move them on the X axis. Let's move them at about here. OK. I think we're good. Now I'll hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode. And it's time to add some modifiers to our object here. And this will be the base part of the, the central system here for our toy. And moving over to the modifiers panel, click this little icon for the modifiers. And click add modifier and first of all, because as you can see here, our object is paper thin. I'm going to add a solidify modifier to add some thickness to my object. So you can see how the solidify modifier works. If I click this little eye icon here. You can see our object without and with the solidify modifier. And I think we're pretty good. Only thing that bothers me here is that you can see here on the circle we have these little edges that look a bit ugly. And we're going to fix this by adding another modifier. Click Add Modifier. And I'm going to add an edge split modifier. And now that the edge split modifier is in place, all we have to do is move over here the object tools and under the shading here I'll click smooth. And as you can see now the circle looks a lot better. Okay. Now I'm going to add a final modifier to my object here. Click add modifier and I'll add a mirror modifier. And as you can see here the mirror modifier mirrors our object on the X axis. This is the object and this is the mirror. So now that I have the base part here ready, I'm going to add some logic to it. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'll be copying and cloning this one. And I'll apply the logic now, so I won't have to apply the logic to every single copy later on. So I'm going to split my 3D view here. Click here and drag to split the 3D view. And I'm going to change the, the top part here. Click this little icon. 
and I'm going to change this one to a logic editor. Okay. Now I'll hit the N key here to make these uh, properties here go. And if you've never seen the logic uh, panel here, the logic editor here, we have sensors, controllers, and actuators. And what happens here is that we have the sensor that is pretty much the cause of the action, and the actuators are the effect. So something happens in the sensor, and what happens is taken through the controller, and it's taken to the actuator where the action here is taking place. Now we'll see this uh, more in depth later on. So for this one, for this part right here, I'll just add three sensors. Click the click here and I'll add an always sensor and two keyboard sensors. One click add sensor and select keyboard. Okay. So we have an always sensor and two keyboard sensors. And I'm going to click add actuator and I'm going to add three motion actuators. One, two, and three. And what I'm going to do now is click this little dot and drag and take the always sensor to the first motion actuator. Take the first keyboard sensor here to the second motion actuator. And take the second keyboard sensor here to the third motion actuator. OK. Now I'm bring my 3D view up. I need some space here. And I've set up the logic here. And now I'll hit one on my numeric keypad to switch to front author view. And it's time now to clone our part here. So this is the base part. I'm going to hit Alt D and not Shift D because I'm creating a link duplicate here. And I'm going to move my duplicate here to the side. Now I'll hit the R key and Y to rotate my duplicate here, my link duplicate on the Y axis, and I'll rotate it for 90 degrees. Okay. I'll hit Alt D again and move it to the side. So as you can see here, we have this little edge shape. And what we'll do is take this base part here. And this base part takes us to two more parts. And these vertical parts here in turn will end up to two more parts each. So let's build it. I'll hit one on my memory keypad for front of view again. And I'll hit Alt D for a duplicate. Move the duplicate at about here. And hit R and Y to rotate it on the Y axis. Okay. Now I'll hit Alt D again and take the duplicate, move it to the side. And I'll hit Alt D again, another duplicate, move it over here. And Alt D for a duplicate and move it over here. Okay. So I think you can pretty much see how this works. And for now we're going to build some child to parent relations. And this right here will be the parent of every object and will move out as we go on. So, as I said before, we have this one. This takes us to these two parts and these two parts in turn are using these parts right here. So let's see how we'll make it. I'm selecting this one, right mouse button click to select it and hold down the shift key to select the vertical part and hit control P and select set parent to object. Now if I right click this part here to select it and hit the G key you can see that the horizontal part follows along. I'm going to select this one, hold down the shift key to select the parent and I'll hit control P and select set parent to object. Now again you can see that if we choose, if we select the vertical part and hit the G key to grab it, you can see that the horizontal parts follow along. OK. And of course the vertical part here is going to be the child of the base part. Now the vertical part is selected. I'll hold down the shift key to select the base part here and hit Ctrl P and select set parent to object. Alright, let's move over to the right side. I'm going to select this one. 
hold down the shift key to select a vertical part and hit ctrl p and select set part into object now select the bottom here part hold down the shift key and select the vertical part and hit ctrl p and set part into object now let's select this one hit the g key to grab it and you can see that the horizontal parts here follow ok now the vertical part is selected again hold down the shift key to select the base part and hit ctrl p and select set part into object now of course if i select the base part here and hit the g key to grab it you can see that the entire system here follows ok we'll need two more parts here for our system i'll select the vertical part here and hit alt d for a new part right mouse button to click to cancel any movement for our duplicate here and I'll hit R, X and type in 90 to rotate this one for 90 degrees, the duplicate on the X axis. Again, I'll select this one and hit Alt D. We have our duplicate here. And again, I'll hit R, X and 90 to rotate it for 90 degrees on the X axis. Okay. So this is our system right here. I think we've set it up all pretty nice. And in the following part, we'll see how we can animate it using the Blender game engine and the sensors and the actuators here to make it uh, work and to make it be controllable in the Blender game engine using our keyboard. So that's pretty nice. I'm going to save this one. And let's save it. I'm going to save it as system underscore one and click save as blender file alright now let's animate this and first thing we're going to use is the always sensor, the first sensor here and the first sensor here takes us to through the first controller into the first motion actuator and what we're telling blender now is that we want always to have some motion applied here to our objects and we won't actually be moving anything but we'll uh, add some rotation to our parts here so I'm selecting this one the top left part here and we always want some rotation here for this part I'll set the X value here and I'm guessing it's X Y and Z I'll set the X to 1 and the Z to minus 1 now I'll move over to my 3D view and while my cursor is over the 3D view I'll hit B key for the Blender game engine and as you can see now, we have the top left part here rotating using the given values. Okay. I'll now hit the escape key to escape the Blender game engine and switch back to my 3D view. Now I'm going to add some rotation here to every part. I'm selecting the base part. Hit right mouse button click to select it. And I'm going to add some rotation to this one as well. I'll set the X here to minus 1 and the Y to 1. Now again, I'll hit the P key for the Blender Game Engine while my cursor is over the 3D view to take a look. And as you can see, the base part here is the parent of every other part here in our system. And since the base part rotates, every other part here follows along. And as you can see, and I really hope you can see it, we have the top left part here rotating using its own values. Okay, I'll hit the Escape key again and add some rotation to every part. I'm going to select this one. Let's set the X to minus 1 and the Z to 1. Selecting this one. Let's set the X to 1 and Y to 1 minus 1. Select this one. 1 and 1, X and Y. I'm selecting this one. Move over to the right side. Minus 1 and minus 1. Select this one. And again, I'm adding some rotation here to random axis for our parts here. Just so, in order to create some interesting motion in the Blender game engine. Let's set this one to minus 1 and this one to minus 1. Let's select this one. I'll set the X to 1 and the Y to 1 as well. And finally selecting this one. And set this one to minus 1 and the Z to minus 1. So now let's hit the P key to take a look. And as you can see, we have some nice little rotations and nice little motion here for our system. 
in the Blender game engine. And again, we've only used the always sensor that takes us to the first motion actuator. Now I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3D view. And it's time for us to affect the system here in the Blender game engine using the keyboard. Now let's move down here and we have the two keyboard sensors here that takes us to the two motion actuators. Okay. So we want to, first of all, I want you to take a look at your keyboard. And we'll be using our numeric keypad to affect the system here in the Blender game engine. And we'll be using 1, 2, 3 on our numeric keypad again to slow things down. And 4, 5 and 6 to speed things up. And we're going to work in the following way. We'll be using, I'm selecting this base part here. And we'll be using 1 on our numeric keypad to slow it down. And 4 to speed it up. We have, and we move out actually, we have these parts right here, the vertical and this one. And these parts right here will use 2 on our numeric keypad to slow down and 5 on our numeric keypad to speed up. And we're moving to the outer part here, 1, 2, 3 and 4. And this part right here will use 6 on our numeric keypad to speed up and 3 to slow down. So let's see how we can how we can make it happen. I'm selecting the base part here, right mouse button click to select it. And as you can see, as we did before, we have some rotation here. We always have some rotation here for our part in the Blender game engine. So in order to slow it down, and first of all we are going to stop it in place, uh, best thing to do is to apply some opposite force, some opposite rotation here. To our base part. So, as I said before, I'll be using one to uh, slow it down, or actually, we'll be stopping this at first and four. Click this uh, key field here, this empty field here, click it, and the Blender is waiting for a key, and I'll hit four. So, let's move over to the second motion actuator, and this one will happen. Whenever numpad, win, uh, numpad 1 is hit, and as I said before, in order to stop it, we'll apply some opposite rotation to this one. So this is set to minus 1 and 1 for the x and y. Let's try to set this one to 1, to a positive 1, and this one to a negative 1. So now again, I'll hit the P key while my cursor is over the 3D view for the Blender game engine. And let's take a look. Now if I hit 1 on my Mary keypad, you can see that we are stopping the base part here from rotating. I'll hit it again. And you can see that it works pretty nice. Now I'll hit the escape key. And what we want here is not to stop the part here entirely in place. But we actually want to slow it down. And in order to slow it down, we're going to leave some rotation here working. So if we try to set this one not to 1, but let's set it to a 0 0.9, and let's set the y value here not to minus 1, but to a minus 0 0.9, we're hoping that these values here will not uh, stop the system, but they'll just slow it down. Now I'm hitting P again while my cursor is over the 3D view for the Blender game engine. And if I hit 1 now on my memory keypad, you can see that although we slow down our base part here, we still have a tiny bit of rotation applied to it. Okay. So this works pretty nice. I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3D view. And we've managed to slow it down. And we are slowing it down whenever numpad 1 is hit. And whenever numpad 4 is hit, we want to speed it up. And in order to speed it up, we are going to apply some uh, some rotation here on the third motion actuator. And this rotation here will have to be similar to this one in order to push to the same direction and speed it up. So I'm going to set the X here to minus 1 and the Y to 1. Okay. So now let's see if this one works as well. Okay. And... I'll hit the P key now while the cursor is over the 3D view. 
and again I'll hit 1 to slow my bass part here down and 4 to speed it up and it works pretty nice okay I'll now hit the escape key again and let's move over to our logic let's take a good look at it and we're going to apply the same steps again for every part now again it might be confusing but we're using pretty simple game engine logic here now I'm selecting this one right mouse button click to select it or excuse me I'll select this one let's select the verticals part first and as I said before we're going to use for this part right here we're going to use 2 to slow them down and 5 to speed them up so let's set the keys here we want 2 to slow it down and click the empty key field and hit 5 numpad 5 to speed it up so moving over to the second motion actuator to the second motion actuator here and again in order to slow it down we'll apply some opposite rotation to the one used by the always sensor and the first motion actuator and we're going to set the x rotation here to a positive 0.9 and the z rotation here to a negative 0.9 and in order to speed it up whenever numpad 5 is hit we'll agree with these values here we'll set the x to minus 1 and the z to 1 now selecting this one and again we'll be using 2 numpad 2 to speed it up to slow it down excuse me and 5 to speed it up and in order to slow it down we'll set the x here to minus 0.9 and the y value to a positive 0.9 and now in order to speed it up whenever numpad 5 is hit we'll agree with these values here and set the x to 1 and the minus 1 for the y axis now selecting this one and for this part again we'll use 2 to slow it down and 5 to speed it up and let's set some opposite rotation to slow it down so I'm going to set the X here since the uh, first motion actuator here is set to minus 1 we're going to set this one to a positive 0.9 and for the Y axis here we're going to set it to a positive 0.9 as well and in order to speed it up we'll set it to minus 1 and minus 1 now selecting this one, right mouse button click to select it and we'll be using 2, click the empty key field here, Blender is waiting for a key, hit number 2 and over here and hit number 5 and in order to slow it down we'll set the X here to a negative 0 0.9 and the Y value here to a negative 0 0.9 as well okay and in order to speed it up we want 1 and 1 on the X and Y axis and again these are the two values here so moving on to the outer parts here I'm going to select this one and again take a look at your numeric keypad and we'll be using 3 on our numeric keypad to slow these parts down and 6 to speed them up now I've selected this one and we want number 3 to slow it down and numpad 6 to speed it up and in order to slow it down we'll set the X here to a positive 0 0.9 again applying some opposite rotation here to this one and the Z value to a positive 0 0.9 as well and in order to speed it up I'll set it to minus 1 and minus 1 now select this one right mouse button click to select it and we want 3 number 3 and number 6 and let's set the rotation here to a positive 0 0.9 and the Z value here to a positive 0 0.9 as well and again we're applying some opposite rotation to this one and in order to speed it up pretty simple we'll set this one to minus 1 the X and the Z to minus 1 as well okay now let's move over to the left select this one 3 and 6 will be the keys in our keyboard the keys will be using the blender game engine and in order to slow it down we'll set the X here to a negative 0 0.9 okay and a negative 0 0.9 for the Y value as well 
and in order to speed it up we'll set the x to 1 and y to 1. OK. And finally this one, select it. And we want 3 to slow it down and numpad 6 to speed it up and in order to slow it down we'll set the x to minus 0 0.9 and the z value here to a positive 0 0.9 since this one is set to minus 1 and in order to speed it up whenever numpad 6 is hit we'll set the x to 1 and the y to minus 1 okay now let's take a look at our system here let's see if we set it up correctly I'll hit the P key while my cursor is over the 3D view for the Blender Game Engine and you can see the system here rotating uh, using the uh, the, mo the first motion actuator and the first motion actuator is fed by the first sensor, the always sensor and that means that the system will always rotate using the given values so now if I hit 1, 2 and 3 on, our, on my numeric keypad here you can see that we have the entire system here slowed down and again and I think this creates a nice and interesting effect okay and now if we hit 4, 5 and 6 on our numeric keypad you can see that the entire system here speeds up and of course as you can imagine we can use key combinations here I'll hit 1 on my numeric keypad to slow the base part down and 5 and 6 to speed the outer parts up. So as you can see you can pretty much move our system here in in very very in lots of ways creates different motion here and I think it looks pretty interesting. Now I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3D view and I think this looks pretty nice. Let's save this, click File and Save As and let's save this one as System 2 and click Save as Blender file. So we got our system here ready, works pretty fine and for this part we're going to make it a bit more interesting by adding some particles. Now some might say that you can't add particles in the Blender game engine and this is of course true I will see a trick to make it all work for our little system here. So first thing I'm going to do is move over to layer 2 and build our particles. Let's click this little icon here to move to the second layer. Now I'll hit Shift A and add mesh cube. I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and I'm going to select this vertex here and I'll select one, two, three more total of four vertices you can see I'm selecting this corner right here. I'll move over to the select menu, click it and select inverse. You can also hit Control i to select inverse. I'll hit the X key and select delete vertices. OK. Now you see what we got left here. I'll click the right mouse button to select this vertex here and hold down the shift key to select one and two more three vertices in total and I'll hit F for a face. Now select this one, hold down the shift key, this one and this one and hit F for a face. Click, select, hold down the shift key, one, two and three, hit F for a face, click, hold down the shift key, two and three and F for a face. Now I'll hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode and our particle here is ready but as you can see we have the origin point it's currently out of the object and we're going to fix that by moving over here to the object options to the object menu and click object transform and select origin to geometry so now as you can see we have our uh, origin here placed at the center of the geometry but as you can see it no longer sits at the center of the world and we're going to fix this. Let's move over here at the object panel and we have the transform options here location, rotation and scale and as you can see the location is a bit off so I'll just set it back to zero for x, y and z. Okay. Now our particle here is ready. I'll hit the tab key 
to switch from object to edit mode and I'll hit the A key to deselect all and A again to select all and I'll hit S to scale down my particle a lot. Okay. I'll also change the name of my particle here. Let's change it from cube to particle underscore one. Okay. And I'll hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode. And I'll add some logic for my particle here. And we have the sensor, controller, and actuator here for our particle. I'm going to add sensor and add an always sensor. Click add actuator and add a motion actuator. And of course, to make it all work, we we'll have to click and drag from this little dot here and link the sensor to the actuator. And what I want for my particle here is to add some motion on the z-axis. So for the location values here, we'll set the z value to 0 0.03. Adding just a bit of motion here on the z-axis for our particle. And this will always be applied for the particle 1 object. Ok, now I'll add a material to my particle here. Click the material panel and hit new for a new material. I'll change the name of the material to part underscore one. And for my particle material, I'll bring the diffuse intensity up to one. I'll bring the specular intensity down to zero. And under the shading tab here, I'll set the emit to 0 0.7. Just so uh, I'll make my uh, material here a lot brighter. So I'll just change the diffuse color now and set it to a nice blue color, right about here. Now I'll hit Shift D for a new particle, Shift D, and I'll also hit X to move the duplicate to the side. And as you can see, the part 1 material has two users now, and these two users are our two particles here. So I'll click this two icon here. We want a single user material, a unique material actually for this object. And I'll change the name to part 2. I'll also change the diffuse color since we now have a unique material for this object and make it a bit brighter, at about here. I'll hit Shift D again for another particle and X to move it on the X axis here. And we need a unique material again, click this little 2 icon and I'll change the name to part 3. And of course change the diffuse color, click the color here to change it. And as you can see I'm moving closer to white. Ok, at about here. Now we need a fourth particle, shift D and X. To move it on the X axis, ok. And of course we need a unique material for this one as well. And as you can understand the name here will be particle 4. Ok. And of course I change the diffuse material, make it brighter, at about here. Now shift D again and X to move it on the X axis. A unique material for this one as well, this will be particle 5. And again I'm changing the, uh, the name of the materials. And of course creating unique materials for every particle here. And I'll change the diffuse color for this one as well. Let's move even closer to white at right about here. OK. Now we have our five particles here ready. I'll just change the names for them. We have this one is particle 1. This one will be particle 2. Hold down the control key and click on the name to change it. Particle 2. This will be particle 3, of course. Selecting this one, and this will be particle 4. Hold down the control key and click the name. Alright, select this one. And hold down control and click the name to change it. This is particle 5. Alright, now moving back to the first layer here and back to our system. And we'll need an object that will add the particles to our scene. So I'll hit 1 on my memory keypad to switch to front author view and hit shift A and we'll use an empty for that. 
Now I'll hit the G key to grab my empty and move it up and to the side and I'm moving it at about here. And as you can see, I want my empty to be at this place exactly. And what I want here for my empty is to follow this part right here. So whenever this part here moves, well, it actually rotates using the always sensor and the keyboard sensors and of course the motion actuators here. And we've set rotation for the part right here. So I want the empty here to be following this part at any time. So in order to do that, I'm right clicking the empty to select it and hold down the shift key to select the part. And then hit Control P to set part into object. Okay. Now let's add some logic to our empty here. We want our empty to add an object to our scene. And uh, this will happen whenever, and I want to look again at your numeric keypad for a while, we'll be using 7, 8, and 9 to add particles to our scene. So I'm going to add a sensor here for my empty, a keyboard sensor. And I'm going to click Add Actuator to add an Edit Object Actuator. Of course, I'm going to link the sensor to the actuator. And I'm going to use NumPad 7. So whenever NumPad 7 is hit, the Edit Object Actuator will add an object to our scene. And the object will be Particle 1. OK. Now let's take a look, let's see how it looks. I've moved my cursor over the 3D view and I'll hit P to play the game engine. And now I'll hit 7 on my numeric keypad. And you can see that whenever I hit 7, we have a particle appearing. Which is nice, but I'll hit the escape key. Uh, but this isn't exactly how we want it to work. What we want is to be able to hold down 7 on our numeric keypad and have a stream of particles coming out from the empty here. And in order to make this work, you have to click this little icon here. And as you can see in the description, it says about triggering some sort of pulse mode. And what I'm guessing here is that if you click this one, whenever NumPad 7 is held down, the sensor here will keep feeding the actuator and the actuator will keep adding objects to our scene. Now let's test it. I'll hit P while my cursor is over the 3D view for the Blender Game Engine. And I'll hit 7 on my numeric keypad. And, and as you can see now, we have particles here added to our scene through the empty. Now I'll hit the escape key. There is one more thing I want to edit uh, for the edit object actuator here. And as you can see here, by default, the time is set to 0. And this means that uh, our particles will live for the entire Blender game engine duration. And we don't want that. We want them to fade out after a while. So I'm going to click this one and set it to 90. OK. Now we have the first empty here in place. I'll hit 1 on my main keypad to switch to front both of you. And I'll hit Shift D to duplicate my empty and move it down and to the side. OK. Now you can see where, where I want this empty to be, but we're having a little issue here. You can see this little dotted line, and that means that if I select this part right here and hit the G key to grab it, you can see that both the empties here follow it. But what we want for this one is to be a child of this part right here. So I'm selecting this empty here, and in order to set it free, we'll have to hit Alt P and select clear parent and keep transformation. OK. And now that the empty is free, and of course we want this empty to follow this part right here, I'll hold down the shift key, select the part, and hit control P and select set parent to object. OK. And I'm selecting the empty now. And I want the, the empty here, this empty, to add not the particle one object, but I want it to add the particle 2 object. OK. Now one on my numeric keypad to switch front of you again. And Shift D to duplicate this empty as well. Move it up. And again we have the parent to child issue here. I'll hit Alt P to clear parent and keep transformation to set my empty free here. 
Of course, I'm going to hold down the Shift key and select the new parent, this part right here, and hit Ctrl P and set parent to object. Now this empty right here, we'll use number 8 on our numeric keypad to add particles to our scene, and it will add the particle 3 object. OK. And again, hitting 1 on my numeric keypad for front author view, and Shift D to duplicate this empty, move it over here, of course we have to hit Alt P to clear parent and keep transformation, and as you can understand this empty here will be a child of this part, click it and hit Ctrl P and set part to object. And of course this empty here will use numpad 8 like the previous one and It'll add the particle 4 object to our scene. OK. Now I'm hitting 1 again on my numeric keypad for the front author view. And hit Shift D. I'm going to duplicate this empty as well. Move it right here and I'll hit 7 on my numeric keypad for the top author view and hit the G key to grab it. Let's move it over here. And you can see, and I really hope you can see it where we want this new empty to be. So of course in order to set the new parent here to be this part we have to hit Alt P first and clear parent and keep transformation and then hold down the Shift key, select the new parent and hit Ctrl P and set parent to object. Now this empty here will use number 9, click the key field here and hit number 9 to add the particle 5 in our scene. OK. Now I'll hit 7 on my numeric keypad for the top author view. For time for a final duplicate, hit Shift D, duplicate this empty. Of course, hit Alt P to set our empty here free and ready for the new parent. You can see the new parent right here. I'll hold down the Shift key, select the new parent, and hit Ctrl P and set parent to object. Now this empty here will add the particle 5 to our scene, this is the final particle. And of course, whenever numpad 9 is hit in the Blender game engine. So I'm going to expand my 3D view here. And let's take a look at our system, let's see how it works. I'll hit the P key while the character is over the 3D view for the Blender game engine. And I'll now hold down 7 on my make keypad. And you can see we have the first two empties, adding the first two particles here. And I'll hold down 8 and 9. And we have even more particles added to our scene. And of course we can hit 4, 5 and 6 to speed up or slow down our system here and create all sorts of motion here. OK, that's pretty interesting. So now I'll hit the escape key. This looks pretty nice and I think it'll be good to save it. Click File, Save As, and I'll save this one as System3. OK, and click Save as Blender File. Alright, now we have the system working. We also have the particles appearing in the Blender game engine. I think it all looks fine. And I'll just select the base part here, right mouse button click to select it. And I'll hit the S key to scale it down. And by setting up the correct child to parent relations, you can see that as I'm scaling the base part here, the parent part, every other part in our system follows. OK. Now I'll hit Shift A and add a circle. Now the circle will use six vertices. Type in six and hit Enter. I'll hit R, X and type in 90 to rotate my circle for 90 degrees on the X axis. Now I'll hit 1 on my Mary keypad to switch the front off of you. And I'll hit the S key to scale my circle up. OK. Now I'll hit 7 on my Mary keypad for the top off of you. And I'll hit the top key to switch from object to edit mode. And I'll hit Z and Y. And I'm moving my vertices here in edit mode because I want my uh, the object origin to stay at the center of the world. 
Now I'll hit E and Y to extrude my vertices here on the Y axis at about here. Okay. So now you see what we're getting. I'll hit Control R while my cursor is over here for a loop get. You can see Blender places a loop get here. And if I scroll my mouse wheel up once, you can see that we have two loop gets. Now I'll click the left mouse button to confirm. Control R. Scroll my mouse wheel up once for two loop gets and click. And again, Control R, two loop gets and click. And for this one, OK. Now I'll hit Control Tab for the mesh select mode and switch from vertex to face. I'll hit the A key to deselect all and A again to select all. And now I'll hit the E key to extrude. Now you can see the extruded faces. I'll hit the right mouse button to cancel any movement for the extruded faces. And I'll hit S and Shift Y to constrain scaling on the X and Z axis. And I'll scale them in at about here. OK. Now I'm going to hit the E key again for another extrusion. Click the right mouse button to cancel any movement again. And I'll hit S to scale them down at about here. Just by just by a tiny bit. Now I'll hit E for another extrusion. Again, click the right mouse button to cancel any movement for the extruded faces. And I'll hit S and Y to scale them on the Y axis. OK. Now E again, right mouse button click, and I'll hit S to scale them down. OK. And I'll also hit S and Y to scale my faces here on the Y axis. Alright. Now I'm going to hit W on my keyboard for the specials menu and select subdivide. And as you can see, we have this loop of faces here subdivided. Now I'm going to click Extrude Individual over the Mesh Tools here and hit the right mouse button. Now as you can see we have extruded the individual faces here. Now I'll also change the pivot point, move over here and click and change it from median point to individual origins. Now if we hit the S key you can see that Blender treats those faces sort of like being, you know, individual objects. Okay. Now I'll hit E for another extrusion, click right mouse pattern, and change the, mid, the pivot point here from individual origins to medium point. And you can now see the difference in scaling. If I hit the S key to scale them down, you can see that they're pulled inwards where the medium point is. So I'm scaling them down at about here, and I'll switch back to individual origins to scale them in place. And I'll hit S and scale them down. OK. Now I'll hit E for another extrusion. Click the right mouse button. Hit S to scale the extruded faces down. OK. Now I'm hitting the Tab key and uh, I want to add a material to my object here. But first of all, I'll change the name of it. I'm holding down the control key while my cursor is over the circle, 0 0.009, and click to change the name, and I'm going to call this one Hexa. Let's add a material to our object here, move over to the material panel, and hit new for a new material. Now I'll change the material name to Hexa underscore 1. And I'll be changing the settings for this material later on. What I want now is to click this little plus icon here for a new material and click new. And I'll change the name of this material to bright underscore one. I'll modify this material a bit. I'll bring the diffuse intensity up to one. Bring the specular intensity down to zero. And I'll change the emit value under the shading tab here from 0 to 0 0.7. So now I'm brightening up my material here. I'll also change the diffuse color to a nice blue color at about here. Now I'll hit the tab key 
over the 3D view to switch from object to edit mode. And we have the second material here selected, the bright one selected. And we also have the faces here selected. And now we'll click assign to assign the specific material to the selected faces. Now if I hit the tab key, you can see that the object here uses the hexa1 object, the hexa1 material, while the selected faces here use the bright one material. Now tab key again, I'll hit the A key, the select all, and hold down alt my, while my cursor is over this loop of faces here, and click to select them all. Now I'll hit the E key to extrude them. Right mouse button click to cancel any movement for the extruded faces again. And I'll change the pivot point here to, let's change it to medium point. Now I'll hit the S key heel to scale those faces up. And I'll hit S and Y to scale them down on the Y axis. And again, as you can see, I'm creating this nice rounding here, this nice fillet for my object. Okay. Now I'm going to select this face, right mouse button click to select it, and hold down the shift key to select this one as well. And I'll hit E for an extrusion. Right mouse button click to cancel any movement for the extruded phases, and I'll hit S to scale them down. Alright. Another extrusion here. Hit the E key, extrude, and another extrusion, E once more, and I'll hit the S key to scale them down. Alright. Now I'll hit W again for the specials menu and click subdivide. And again, moving over to best tools and selecting and clicking extrude individual to extrude individual faces here and hit the right mouse button. And of course, I'm going to move down here and change the pivot point to individual origins. Now I'll hit the S key to scale my faces down. OK. And E for another extrusion, extrude them out. E once more, extrude them by a tiny bit. And then hit the S key to scale them down. OK. Now moving on to the uh, bottom here of my object. I'll select this face, right mouse button click to select it, and hold down the shift key to select three faces here in total. And I'll hit the E key to extrude them, extrude them out, right about here. And I'll hit S and Y to scale them on the Y axis. Alright. Now E once more for another extrusion. Okay and E for another extrusion. Now those extruded faces are going to be scaled, hit the S key and Y on the Y axis. Just a little. Okay. Now I want a loop cut here. I'm going to hit Ctrl R for loop cut and click the left mouse button to confirm and move it at about here. And I'll hit Control Tab now for the mesh select mode and select face. Now I'll hold down Alt while my cursor is over here, and click the left mouse, the right mouse button to select this row of faces. I'll add a new material to my object. Click the plus icon here to add a new material and click New. And this one will be called Bright Underscore Two. Now for this one, we'll bring the diffuse intensity up again, the specular intensity down, and we'll add an emit value here under the shading tab to we'll set it up to 0 0.75. And I'll also change the color, the diffuse color, set it at about here. Now again, we have the material selected, we have the face selected, and we'll just click assign. OK. Now I'm selecting this phase right here and holding down the shift key to select this one as well. And I'll hit 1 on my mirror keypad to switch the front both of you. I'll hit the E key to extrude. Let's extrude those two phases out. 
OK. And I'll hit the R key to rotate. And as you can see, we're getting some strange rotation here. And this is because we have set the pivot point here to individual origins. Let's set it back to medium point. And if I now hit the R key to rotate, you can see that we're rotating both the faces exactly how we want them to. Now I'll hit the G key to grab them, move them down at about here. And I'll also hit G and X to scale them on the X axis. Or excuse me, S and X to scale them on the X axis. Okay. Now I'll hit the E key for another extrusion through them hit S to scale the extruded faces down right about here and I'll also hit S and X okay now E another extrusion click the right mouse button to cancel any movement and S to scale the extruded faces here down and once more I want to make my shape here better I'll hit S and X to scale it on the X axis. I'll hit E for another extrusion. Extrude down. OK. And I'll hit E. Yet another extrusion. Click the right mouse button and hit S to scale the extrude the faces up. At about here. And once more, S and X to pull them in. At about here, I'm hitting E for another extrusion. S to scale the extruded faces up. OK. And E for a final extrusion. And let's move them down at about here. Now that we finish with the extrusions here, I'll hit the X key and select delete faces. All right. Now you can see our, uh, our object here, our part here. And we want the uh, same modeling here to be applied on the left side. So I'll hit 1 on my memory keypad to switch the front of view. And I'll hit Control Tab for the mesh select mode and click Vertex. Now I'll hit the A key to select all and A key to deselect all, making sure everything uh, is deselected. And I'll also click this little icon here and making sure that I can also select the vertices or the faces I cannot see. Now I'll hit the B key for the selection tool here, click and drag, select the entire left side of our object. Now I'll hit the X key and select delete vertices. OK. Now that we have our object here in place, in order to uh, make it whole again, I'll move over to the modifiers panel, click this little icon here, this is E here and click Add Modifier and Add a Mirror Modifier. OK. Now I'll hit Control Tab again for the Mesh Select Mode, select Face. Now also click this little icon here, making sure that I can only select the visible faces. I'm going to select this face right here, and hold down the Shift key to select this one as well. 